All right, guys, well, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are doing one project and one project only, and you'll know why soon enough, because uh, this is a complete and utter monumental pain in the ass. Um, we're gonna do U-joints on the drive shaft for the cutlass today. So normally there's like a retainer clip that goes in here, um, or there's one that goes down inside the ear. So it's either you either get a clip in here or you get a little slide in horseshoe deal um, on the yoke. <clears throat> Um, the GM, for reasons that elude any logical thinking human, decided to do something called plastic injection U-joints. And these things are just fucking ridiculous. So, what we have to do, believe it or not, to get U-joints changed out is it's going to require a torch, a hammer, a socket, a vise, some channel locks, and like a lot of patience. What you have to do is, if you guys can see, there's a little uh, dot right there. There's a little, if you see it, there's a little, um, uh, like a little ear hanging, uh, sticking up almost right off of this tang. Let me get something I can point at it with. So it's this thing right here is what we're looking at. That guy right there. That, believe it or not, is a piece of plastic, plastic, what I'm coloring silver. That cap is the top of a, plast of a piece of injected plastic. So believe it or not, that piece of plastic rides in the retainer groove on the U-joint in there. Um, and that's how they decided to put these in. I don't know, uh, it's been theorized in the past that this was an attempt to get people to come back to come straight to the dealership. Uh, I don't know, I, I don't know what the deal is on it. I know it's a pain in the ass. So what you gotta do is you've gotta actually sweat those things out with a torch. Once you get all the stuff coming out, then you can drive the U-joints out. Uh, and we'll talk about that more coming up. But basically, what you need, is, like I said before, you need a hammer, a socket, um, a pair of channel locks, because these things are going to get really hot, uh, and you don't want to be messing around with these when they're hot. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll just start putting everything back together. So, uh, without further ado, let's get to work. Okay, guys. Quick side note, uh, just so we're clear, you don't have to sweat the plastic out. If you don't want to, you can actually press them out. Um, this is my service manual uh, that I have for the Cutlass. It's kind of interesting because this was actually from the Chrysler Corporation Engineering Library. So it's kind of interesting that they had a service manual for Oldsmobiles. But um, anyway, direct uh, to you from the Chrysler Corporation Engineering Library, we have a 1974 Oldsmobile service manual. And in said service manual, it actually says, it doesn't mention the plastic, uh, the plastic injected retainers anywhere in here it, until you get to this picture and we can see the cat, the, uh, the remnant of the injection, the uh, injection molding machine here. Production universal joints cannot be reassembled. There are no bearing retainer grooves in production bearing cups. Discard all universal joint parts removed. So they're basically saying it's an unserviceable part. Um, so, but they're they're saying in here that you can just uh, basically you can just press it out and it'll shear it'll shear the plastic retainer. There it is. Rotate the propeller shaft, shear the opposite plastic retainer, and press the opposite bearing cup out of the yoke. So you can press these out, um, but it's just easier to use a torch and sweat them out. Quick note on torches, um, when you're working with cutting torches, you got an oxygen bottle and you have an acetylene bottle. Um, really, really good safety tip. Do not, it's two things. Um, don't peg your regulators. So in other words, don't just crack that valve wide open, full blast. Um, it slams your regulators and it'll, I mean, it, I've seen them pop the backs off them. There's a lot of pressure in these bottles. Um, second thing is don't open the valve all the way. You'd only need to open it very slowly and just one turn. That's it. And the reason for that is, is that if something goes wrong up here on the workbench and we get a flashback or it's popped back into the, into the lines, you want to be able to reach over and shut that off before the flame front gets into the bottle and basically turns your shop into Hiroshima. Okay, the idea is that you want to get this, this ear really good and hot. You want to cook out your... 
you've got to get this ear hot enough. And you just want to work the flame all the way around it. You've got to get this entire assembly hot enough that this injected plastic will literally squish out of there. I know this is the dumbest thing ever, I swear to God. And when we replace it, we'll replace it with regular, um, with regular clips. The replacement is regular clips. But you want to make sure that all sweats out. You can see it coming out of there, lighting on fire. You see that coming out? Now we'll do the bottom one, watch it all start working its way out of there. There it comes. Yeah, see it coming out? Looks like those weird, shitty uh, Fourth of July snake things that you, that you get. So you gotta sweat all of this out. You wanna make sure it's all out of there. Uh, the best thing to do is just get one done and then turn it over and clamp it up and basically do the next one. All right, here we go. We have 12 of these to do, believe it or not. Super fun times. Okay, once you've got those sweated out, then it's time to start knocking your joints out. That thing is smoking hot. You do not want to touch it. All right, so next step, once you get that plastic sweated out, is you need to drive your uh, drive uh, U-joints out of the, the old U-joints out of the drive shaft. Make sure you're wearing gloves, unless you've let this thing like cool off for an hour. Uh, it's really, really hot. The other caps will probably fall off. Needle bearings will go flying, it'll be chaos, but trust me, it's all gonna be good at the end of the day. So what you wanna do is either have a vise like this, where you can just drive the U-joint the out, um, or if you're gonna do it on a bench, the way to do it is get yourself a socket that is dimensionally bigger than the U-joint cap. And the way to know that is a really easy way is to take your brand new one and if it fits in there, you're good to go. Put it on the bench, put your drive line over that, then get a socket that's dimensionally smaller than the cap, place it on the U-joint and drive it out. Now, if you do it the, that way, that allows you the, somewhere for that cap to go to drop off. If you have a bench vise like we have in the shop, then you can just do it right from here. Um, and while it's warm, remember, warm things are expanded, so shit tends to kind of go in and out a little easier. Um, so it's a good idea. Don't let it cool off completely. Uh, if you can bang it out ha, while it's still warm, uh, give that a shot. So um, let's see if we can get the U-joint driven out of here with a couple of good whacks. Oh yeah, it's already moving. That's a good sign. There's one of the retainers. Almost there. There she goes, all right. There she goes. All right, so once you've got both of those out, your U joint comes out just like that. Come on, just. <laughs> All right, so now what we're gonna need to do is, let, I'm gonna let this continue to cool off a little bit. And what you need to do, if you guys can look down in here, you wanna check and make sure that there's no rust, um, which obviously we have some. You wanna clean all that up before you put your new uh, bearing in there. Um, before you get your new bearing in there, you want to clean all that up just so you've got a nice clean surface for the bearing, the new bearing cap to ride on. All right, so what you want to do is you want to use a piece of um, like some, I've got some 3300 uh, wet dry and a, a little scotch bright piece of scotch bright pad. Uh, you don't want to use something too rough on the sandpaper side. Um, you don't want to gouge this. This is a bearing surface for all intents and purposes. So we're just looking to clean it up. Not get crazy. 
Okay, so once you get it cleaned up, um, you can see the surface looks a lot better in there. Not so bad. Um, once you get it cleaned up, the other thing to do is just take a light run around in there. Don't let, don't get cut. Uh, and just make sure there's no metal burrs in there or anything else that'd be obstructing or that would fight us as we go to put the new uh, U joint. Now we're, we're set up, we're ready to put our uh, new U joint together. So first thing to do is um, I've got ones, the ones I picked up for the cutlass are um, a 534G. Um, these are precision universal joints. I just got them at O'Reilly's, no big deal. Uh, but I did get greasable ones. I think most of the replacements now come with a grease circ in them. Um, but if you get a set and they don't have them, I highly recommend uh, getting them and installing them. Um, these are already in, I already put them in. It's just a seven millimeter uh, fitting, super easy. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is uh, you want to pull these caps off uh, very carefully. You know, I'm going to walk up to the camera. So when you take this apart, what you have in there, if you take a look, is a set of needle bearings in there. It's critically important that those needle bearings are all just like that, all lined up like little soldiers. Um, think of it as that weird tilt-a-whirl ride at the state fair, and those are all people on the inside trying not to throw up on each other as the thing spins around. You know the thing I'm talking about? Um, okay, so that's what you want. You want those needles to be all lined up. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take these caps off that are going to go in the that are going to go in the deal, and we'll get our U joint set in there, and then what we're going to do is we're actually gonna, you can, now you can do this one of two ways. You can put it on your bench and tap it in with a hammer. Again, using a, a socket that's just dimensionally smaller and fitting it. Or what you can do is you can do it in the vise. Now, if you do it in the vise, you just wanna be real careful that you do it evenly. That's the key. And if you feel any binding, stop. Because you gotta make sure that those needle bearings are actually setting down over that shaft. We'll start off using the vise for this and then what we'll do is we're probably gonna have to use the socket to tap it in the rest of the way to get the new retainer clip. So now what we'll do is we'll get set up to put our U-joint together. Okay, once you get it kind of chucked up in there, again, nice and slow. There's no reason to rush putting this together. Okay, so you're gonna get them to a point where they're pretty much just flush, and that's as far as you can go. There's a good chance when we look in here, we may not have the clearance for the retainer clips. So let's get it out of the vise and we'll check that. Okay, so you can see the caps are pretty flush uh, with the uh, yoke. This one's sticking up a little bit more, so we're gonna drive it down just a little bit more. It's fine. All right. So now that when, once you've got both of the joints flush to the yoke, then what you're looking for is this groove right here. If you see this groove, that's where the new retainer clips are gonna go in. So when you get the U joints, and I'll put that part number in the description below uh, for you guys, if you need to do this yourself. So the U joints come with, if I can get it out of there, there we go. Um, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to put these retainer clips in those grooves. So the caps have to be in enough that you can get access to that groove for this clip. And just be careful because these things, uh, if, they, if you miss on them, they tend to ricochet across the a shop pretty good. So you just want to tap it in just like that. That's all there is to it. Really super simple. Just get it set. 
go ahead and tap it in with this really huge hammer. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. You know, you joints are installed. Now, the best thing to do is to uh, take some masking tape and tape around this so that your uh, caps don't come off, okay? So this is the easy end. Now we're gonna do the yoke end. All right, so um, got the yoke end apart, and now we're gonna take that U-joint out. Same procedure, sweat the plastic out, um, knock it out of there, we'll put the new one in, and then we'll put the yoke assembly back onto the drive shaft. Okay, let's go. Well, that is one reassembled drive shaft with new U joints, with clips and no more stupid plastic filler shit, whatever the hell was in there stuff. Anyway, uh, that plastic injection is retarded. Anyway, new U joints in it. Um, super happy with it, and uh, we'll uh, throw a little when it's appropriate, time appropriate. We'll. Hit a little uh, emery cloth on here or some uh, some more uh, uh, 3M pads and uh, scuff it up and give it a new coat of paint. And when I do that, I'll get this all cleaned up at the same time. There's no point in doing it now. I'm not sure how long it's going to be before this thing actually goes in. Uh, I just wanted to have it ready. So that was the reason for getting it uh, done today. But um, so, yeah, so we'll, we'll get ready to put it in. We'll get it all cleaned up do all the appropriate stuff but in the meantime there you go guys that's how you rebuild new you uh, rebuild a drive shaft or put new u joints in a gm 74 olds cutlass plastic injection retained u joints god it just feels if i swear to god it feels like a stretch to fit belt kind of a deal i don't know where gm comes up with this shit but anyway all right that's it for this episode, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Come on back and uh, join us next time, and we'll have more fun adventures in the shop. I think we're going to try and work on the 37 some today, so that'll be another video, but uh, we'll probably see if we can't get that tail pan finished up. All right, that's it. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Like uh, the video if you want to. If you feel like subscribing, that would be great. Uh, if not, you know, just come on back and hang out. Watch the videos, man. No pressure. Whatever. <laughs> Later.